my entire bonus on these earrings for myself dadi saw them and screamed diamonds how can you buy them from just any jeweler i smiled and said dadi you can always trust a jeweler who keeps such a trusted brand forever mark from de beers group less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the forever mark inscription we go beyond cut color clarity and carat to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful forever mark a diamond is forever i'm going to propose today she has to say yes can anyone say no to this beautiful ring but then the questions will start did you check the cut clarity color etc etc and to all her questions I'll have just one answer. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carat to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. Forever Mark Tribute Collection. Seasons change. A diamond is forever. Marrying Anita was the smartest thing I've done. She's my better half in every sense. And so for our 10th anniversary, I thought diamond bangles would be perfect. Except I know nothing about buying genuine diamonds. So I did another smart thing. I turned to the expert. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. Every diamond in these bangles has a unique inscription number and identification card. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I spent my entire bonus on these earrings for myself. Dadi saw them and screamed, "Diamonds? How can you buy them from just any jeweler?" I smiled and said, "Dadi, you can always trust a jeweler who keeps such a trusted brand." Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carat to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I'm going to propose today. She has to say yes. Can anyone say no to this beautiful ring? But then the questions will start. Did you check the cut, clarity, color, etc., etc.? And to all her questions, I'll have just one answer. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carat to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. Forever Mark Tribute Collection. Seasons change. A diamond is forever.
marrying Anita was the smartest thing I've done. She's my better half in every sense. And so for our 10th anniversary, I thought diamond bangles would be perfect. Except I know nothing about buying genuine diamonds. So I did another smart thing. I turned to the expert. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. Every diamond in these bangles has a unique inscription number and identification card. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I spent my entire bonus on these earrings for myself. Dadi saw them and screamed, Diamonds? How can you buy them from just any jeweler? I smiled and said, Dadi, you can always trust a jeweler who keeps such a trusted brand. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carrot to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I'm going to propose today. She has to say yes. Can anyone say no to this beautiful ring? But then the questions will start. Did you check the cut, clarity, color, etc, etc? And to all her questions, I'll have just one answer. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carrot to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. Forevermark Tribute Collection. Seasons change. A diamond is forever. Marrying Anita was the smartest thing I've done. She's my better half in every sense. And so for our 10th anniversary, I thought diamond bangles would be perfect. Except I know nothing about buying genuine diamonds. So I did another smart thing. I turned to the expert. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. Every diamond in these bangles has a unique inscription number and identification card. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I spent my entire bonus on these earrings for myself. Dadi saw them and screamed, Diamonds? How can you buy them from just any jeweler? I smiled and said, Dadi, you can always trust a jeweler who keeps such a trusted brand. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carrot to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I'm going to propose today. She has to say yes. Can anyone say no to this beautiful ring? But then the questions will start. Did you check the cut, clarity, color, etc, etc? And to all her questions, I'll have just one answer. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carrot to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. Forevermark Tribute Collection. Seasons change. A diamond is forever.
marrying Anita was the smartest thing I've done. She's my better half in every sense. And so for our 10th anniversary, I thought diamond bangles would be perfect. Except I know nothing about buying genuine diamonds. So I did another smart thing. I turned to the expert. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. Every diamond in these bangles has a unique inscription number and identification card. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I spent my entire bonus on these earrings for myself. Dadi saw them and screamed, Diamonds! How can you buy them from just any jeweler? I smiled and said, Dadi, you can always trust a jeweler who keeps such a trusted brand. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carrot to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I'm going to propose today. She has to say yes. Can anyone say no to this beautiful ring? But then the questions will start. Did you check the cut, clarity, color, etc, etc? And to all her questions, I'll have just one answer. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. We go beyond cut, color, clarity and carrot to bring you diamonds that are amongst the world's most beautiful. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. Forevermark Tribute Collection. Seasons change. A diamond is forever. Marrying Anita was the smartest thing I've done. She's my better half in every sense. And so for our 10th anniversary, I thought diamond bangles would be perfect. Except I know nothing about buying genuine diamonds. So I did another smart thing. I turned to the expert. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark inscription. Every diamond in these bangles has a unique inscription number and identification card. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. I spent my entire bonus on these earrings for myself. Dadi saw them and screamed, Diamonds! How can you buy them from just any jeweler? I smiled and said, Dadi, you can always trust a jeweler who keeps such a trusted brand. Forever Mark from De Beers Group. Less than 1% of the world's diamonds are worthy of the Forever Mark. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone and welcome to the landmark De Beers Forum. Thank you for taking your time to join us today. Our annual forum celebrates the unique journey of each diamond and is an event very close to our heart as it brings together all of you, our partners, to collaborate and transact over the next few days. We truly value your presence here and I'm sure that this time together will be extremely enriching. Before we begin, I would like to take you through a few initiatives we have taken to ensure your safety during your time here. As you entered the event today, you passed through the Predict Medic's safe entry station. This is an AI-powered tool that determines if people are carrying any symptoms of infectious disease. There are sanitizer stations placed at regular intervals throughout the venue. There are masks available at the entrance, 
should you feel the need to wear one. In case of an emergency, there are five fire exit doors across this room. The green illuminated fire exit signages will guide you to the closest fire exit. If you need any further assistance, our team is on ground to help you at all times. We are making the De Beers Forum a low waste event and minimizing the amount of waste we send to the landfills through our partners, Scrap. We need you to help make this a success. Moving on, this year, our theme for the forum is a celebration of the iconic De Beers tagline, a diamond is forever. Today, we will cover this theme, celebrate the past, work in the present, and focus on the future ahead. I now welcome Mr. Sachin Jain, Managing Director, De Beers India, to take you through what we have to offer this year. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Kainaz. <laughs> Distinguished guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I welcome each and every member of this August gathering to this very important 11th annual De Beers Forum, a forum that we all look forward to and we take pride. And this time it's happening in this marvelous city of Mumbai, the city that we call our home, the city which is the nerve center of this global diamond business. So thank you all. And thank you all for being here physically present. <laughs> you know, last one hour, this physicality, this hug, this handshake, that's the essence of what we do. And I'm so glad that all of us are here together. And you know what? Whilst you've pledged your time to be here, and the most important time that you all have is your time. And while you pledge to be here, absorb as much from this platform. Let's, uh, let's put our heads together. Let's unveil a future that's widely alone. But my friends, the future, that is a big, big possibility. At the outset, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our guest of honor. That's His Excellency, Mr. Gilbert Mnose. He's the High Commissioner to India, Government of Botswana. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a big round of applause. Thank you. His presence here is a true testament of the great partnership we had as De Beers and the people of Botswana. It's also a great testament of what diamonds do and what diamonds can do into the future. You know, last two years have been almost very tough. They've thrown us various challenges, you know, both at a personal as well as a professional levels, and that have led us to dig deep into our internal reserves of resilience, of faith, of optimism, and what we can change. Think about it. Last two years weren't easy, and lots has changed, and a lot of us suffered freshly, personally. And I'm very saddened to share with you that even at De Beers, we lost 72 of our colleagues to COVID. Not a small, small mean. You know, all of us faced that time. But you know what? What did we do as an organization? What did we do as an industry? My heart swells with pride to be a part of De Beers. My heart swells with pride to be a part of this industry. You know, we took cognizance. We took changes. We provided help wherever was required. You know, we worked in the communities, we provided vaccinations, the GJEPC, the GJC, the GJNRC, loads of initiative by all our retailing companies here. But all of that boils down that we all need to reflect on what we did. And we took pride. I mean, I take a lot of pride, and I urge all of you to be proud of what we do in this organization and this industry. You know, 2021, ironically, when we're coming out of this COVID, ironically, has been the most phenomenal years we've seen. Look at the mining side, look at the manufacturing, cutting, polishing, retailing, and the demand at the end client remained buoyant. And if I were to say, what was the reason? Why did we see a 2021 so strong? And I think there are two reasons why that happened. First and foremost, I salute the leadership sitting in this room. You guys acted with grit. You guys acted with confidence. You guys kept the end client in your mind, your employees in mind. You know, we act nimbly on the product. You know, it wasn't easy flow of product, but we did our best. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to all of you. How 2021, which was not an easy year, we came out stronger. But I think there's one more reason. And that reason is the core of what diamonds are and what they do. Reflect back on that. You know, diamonds get happiness. 
Diamonds is a source of joy. Diamonds hold value in the hearts and minds of consumers and our end clients. And I think we should always keep that center stage as to why we are in this business and what diamonds do and impact in the lives and hearts of consumers. And the point is that we all, we all, whether you're cutting a diamond, you're making jewelry, you're retailing, all of us have to feel joyful of what we enable. Ladies and gentlemen, we enable that joy. We enable that heart-touching feeling. And through you, right now at your store, somebody is experiencing the most memorable occasion of their lifetime. And that's not a mean task. The fact is, somebody's lifetime's memorable occasion is happening through you, through us, at our stores, and through our product. And that's very, very critical. And that draws me to the theme of this year's forum. 1947 is a very important year for India. We all know that. So to begin with, all my fellow Indians, a happy 75th Independence Year to all of us. <laughs> what we all have achieved in this great nation is spectacular. This year was also a very important year for the diamond business. We, you know, we hear about the phrase, the slogan, the famous one, a diamond is forever. But let me tell you a bit of history about how it came into existence. In 1947, a young copywriter called Mary Francis Grady she wrote simple four words that changed the destiny of our business. From that day on, the relationship of diamonds start connecting to the emotional insight of a human being to another human being. And for me, I think that was a fundamental changing moment. 1947, when she wrote these four words, I'm sure she wasn't aware that she's writing history. She wasn't aware that the world of diamond will be different from then on. And not just her, even at De Beers, nobody knew that that's a fundamental, fundamental change that's happening. But it did, and we created history. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to share that the theme for the forum this year is the celebration of the diamond is forever. And when you say that, I'd urge all of you that it's not just the celebration of the industry. Think back of your organizations, your careers, what happened? What has happened in the last 75 years? And you know, when we talk about Indian industry, an average of 100 years of existence is almost like, you know, a lot of you have been there. But last 75 years, this one line that has impacted your business, your careers, reflect that. Let's pay tribute. And the reason why doing it, this is to give that homage and the respect to this one line. And you might wonder why over the last 75 years, these four simple words have still stayed in vogue. They've not gone out of vogue. And I think in the current context of when we look at the end clients today and what's happening in their lives, in this transient world we live, where everything is changing almost every day, these four words bring that permanence. And that's so critical. You know, why they have stayed relevant even 75 years later is that these four words represent the most simple, the most basic emotion between two, two souls. So ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate the, the you know, iconic line, a diamond is forever, which did not just do good to one company, one career, it did good to us. We are here today uh, largely because of this line. So when you go back to your stores and your manufacturing, get your teams together, celebrate this line. I think we, we owe a tribute to this line. And I'd like to show you a short video that encapsulates the spirit of what a diamond is forever is all about. Can I please have the video?
Ladies and gentlemen, this deserves a big round of applause. This one line that has, you know, almost been a beacon. It's been the north star for our industry. It has led us through the last 75 years, and it's going to certainly shape us for the next 75. Hira hai sada ke liye. Diamond is forever. Is not just a tagline for us at De Beers. This line holds the fundamental truth: the diamonds have been around forever and ever, and this timelessness represents long-term relationships. And I urge all of you that use this forum, this De Beers forum that we're doing here, not just to look back alone. We need to celebrate, you know, that's there. But don't use this forum just to look back. Let's look into the future. What we'll create. I would urge all of you to craft your future of what you'll do as your careers, your organizations, your people. Write them in real words today. You might have received this one envelope on your chairs, on your tables. I'd urge all of you. This is a notepad and a pen. I'd urge all of you to write what you think is your future. You know, craft those those thoughts and visions in actual words. You know, there's a beautiful concept in Sanskrit called Bhavishya. We all know it. But when I read about it, the concept of Bhavishya is made of two words: Bhavya and Isha. Bhavya means tomorrow, kal. Isha means apke man ka, what your heart desires. So I urge all of you to, you know, imagine a vision of where you'd be, where you'd get to, where your careers will get to, where your families will get to, and put those thoughts in actual words today. Use it now, and I'm going to tell you why that's so critical today. It's so important that we use this platform not just you know to meet each other and hug. I am saying that's very important, but go back and start a new chapter of your lives in your platforms today. You know, when you talk about imagination, according to me, imagination, imagination, or a vision of what we can create as human beings. You might know that human beings are the only species on planet Earth that can envision a future. You know, we are the only ones. What's going to happen tomorrow is different. What's going to happen tomorrow is is unique. Why I'm standing here, the screen is happening. I can talk on a mic was somebody's vision, right? So my friends, imagination is the most marvelous, the most powerful, and the most inconvincible force that we've seen on on Mother Earth. Think about it. This is our time. This is our opportunity as India. This is our opportunity as the diamond world. And when you look at the opportunity, and we talked about last last year at the forum, and Esther should be here. She's going to talk to us tomorrow. We did a lot of research as to what's the real potential of the Indian market. And we talked about that there is a potential, keeping in mind the end client trends and needs, and if we change accordingly, the current market size, which is at about six billion dollars, has the potential to get to seventeen and a half billion dollars by 2030. Please absorb that. We talked about it in detail. It's going to not just double, but go even further. And cumulatively, from the year 2021 to 30, it is a cumulative opportunity of a whooping 75 billion dollars. And you'll hear about the real potential from my colleague tomorrow. But you know, there's a bit of good news and a bad news around it. Let me first tell you the good news. The good news is it's a real opportunity. It'll exist. We'll have to make the right changes. Stand with courage. Make the changes in our own businesses to get to this level. But the not so good news is that this change and this growth is nothing. There's nothing democratic about it. It's not going to be for everybody. There will be people sitting in this audience who'll take changes, who'll take the stride, who stand up and be willing with courage to make the changes on the status quo. And the, and the change and the growth will be limited there. So I think it's important that we envision. And I go back again on the vision. You know, we have an opportunity to be either winners. And be a part of this journey to get to this goal, or we stand inside and say, "Life is great. What's worked in the past will work in the future." And you see this passing by in front of you. And all of this depends on the great or the very phenomenal trends that are happening at the end clients level. And the fundamental change that's happening is at the end clients. You know how they're changing in their emotions, how it's changing in their relationships, their connections with digital. And our leader, Mr. Mark Jashay, is going to deep dive in all those trends in detail in the next session. But that's the fundamental thing: keep in your eyes and minds the end client and what's changing. And whatever comes in that way has to be taken aside, because if your goal and what you craft that your goal is going to be to get to in the eight years' time, everything then becomes transitionary. And one of the important changes that I like to talk on, which is I was very humble because I was in Botswana, and uh, I saw this mine, and this was an incredible feeling when you get and see this mine. Few of us have gone there together, but when you go to this mine and you see 
And you know those little lights that you see over there are trucks that are taking, going up and down. And the size of the tire of the truck is twice my height. So this is magnanimous. This is huge. You suddenly get humbled. But you know, I often ask the end clients, and I'll ask all of you, what do you see in this mine? What do you see in this picture? You might say, engineering, great piece of architecture, great work happening, big mine. Somebody would say, the most valuable real estate in the world. True. Yeah. Somebody might say, it's a scar on Mother Earth. That's also true. But when you look at this picture from the eyes of De Beers, from the eyes of Botswana, it is progress. It is, it is you know, 10,000 kilometers of roads. It's hundreds of schools. It's hundreds of hospitals. And that's what it's led to. So when we say a source transparency, and Mark, you'll talk in detail about what that means, but I can tell you that our source is so rich. The storytelling is so powerful. All that we need is for us to bring those content together in front, because the end clients are ready to know where the things are coming from. And our story is so, so, so powerful. And the next slide, if you go on the next one, you'll see the trends that I'm talking about. We'll touch upon how we are going to move from a commoditized world to branded world. How are we going to move from consumers to end clients? How are we going to get really in the digital age where it's not going to be digital first, it's going to be digital everywhere, right? And lastly, the purpose and source, how that comes up. And all this comes together, very interlinked, and these trends are today's trends that we need to stand up and take notice of and make changes. You know, this digital is very interesting. We all hear about the metaverse, and tomorrow we have a speaker who's going to talk about that. But go back 20 years. Same place, we were all in the room, we talked about e-commerce, we talked about whether diamonds will sell online. What did we all say? We said, perhaps not. We said, we were convinced that diamonds, such a valuable category, who's going to buy it online? You perhaps will buy you know, fashion products there. But we were prone wrong. And we started when the world had moved forward. This is our chance. The new world of metaverse is opening up, and we need to lead it from the front. So I would urge all of you to learn about it. You know, I heard one, um, one, one statistics. The last year, Adidas sold $22 million of sneakers on the metaverse. Now, you're like, really? And that, they say, is the trial year. The real year with a half a billion dollar top line objective is this year, selling sneakers, digital, I mean, who knows what that is, but we need to start taking notice and take cognizance. Now, let's talk about what are we doing at De Beers, because when we see this opportunity, we are making some large commitments on capital to move forward and, and really grasp this opportunity. What you see on your screen is, is the largest vessel that's currently sailing in Atlantic. We sailed it in March. Large capital investments and commitment from De Beers because we believe in the future of diamonds. We believe in the future of natural diamonds, ones that hold value, ones that hold that meaning of love and motion. You know, Mark had taken us here, and I had a great opportunity to be on this vessel in the center of Atlantic, where it's just picking up diamonds that have rolled through the rivers over billions of years. What a serial moment. But that's what we believe in as a future of diamonds. We are doing what we call an underground operation at the Venetian mine. So while that's, again, a large commitment on capital, we're going what we call the Cut 8 in the Junang mine. This is the largest mine, diamond mine in the world. If you go further, you all know that we introduced the concept of code of origin last year, and that gives source transparency, and we're working on some really enriched uh, storytelling of source to our clients through you. We worked on Tracer, which is a blockchain platform. And when did we do that? Not when the Ukraine war happened. We, th we realized that this is a trend for the end clients moving forward. We invested on our blockchain four and a half years ago. So while the time is ready, we are ready to offer all these elements to you. And lastly, one of the things that we're doing, and my friend David is going to talk more in detail about it, is our building forever goals. Now, this is almost a mission that we now take through you, with you, to unveil this future in the, in the forward. And just a couple of things here. By 2030, De Beers will be a carbon neutral company. Small words, a big task. You know, by 2030, we'll have equal number of men and women working at De Beers. Small words, but a humongous task, right? And this all will matter. This all will, is already making importance. It will matter to our end clients. But we need to make those changes today. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, just sum it up. I think the key is that we have a potential. The key is we need to look at trends. At De Beers, we will up our game. We will commit ourselves for the brand. We will commit ourselves for a high-end retail experience so that when we create this beautiful image about our, you know, a diamond is forever visual that you just saw, 
when you, we, there, there is continuity on retail and our product get that respect. We will do all that is required and I urge all of you, again, please use this notepad. It's a simple notepad, there's nothing fancy about it, but it has the potential to craft a future that we all can believe and make happen. So let's move down to present time, the present moment, right? And of course, we build a future. But 2021, as I said, was a phenomenal year. We are all gearing up to make 2022 a phenomenal year as well. And I'd like to show you a video that encapsulates all that we've done in the Indian market in the last 12 months. Can I please have the video?
together in this market, together with all of us working with each other. Mr. Mark Jashe is our chief executive officer. He's joined us at the beginning of the year. He's somebody who's got an absolute breath of fresh air to all of us in the business. He's someone who's really worked with very large organizations like LVMH and Tiffany. And he's joining us and now shaping us the whole future of the global diamond business. And it is with pleasure that I welcome Mark on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mark Jashe. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, my friend. So, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm extremely pleased to be here today. I want to extend much appreciation to His Excellency for his presence. We're privileged and honored to have you as the representative of the government of Botswana and the people of Botswana, where it all begins. And you rightly explained it. So I was invited to talk about, you know, what's the future? And I would be, frankly, who would I be a few weeks or months in the business to tell you about the future? What I will share today is our convictions of the principles that will shape the future, but I can't tell you, and nobody can really tell, what the future will be. But before that, and I think it's not working. Okay, yes, there it is. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the personal story. And for those of you who were in London, I apologize, I will repeat it, but it really changed my life. And I think after 10 years in the jewelry industry, uh, you know that I work for Tiffany, I discovered a new world. There were things I didn't know, and I didn't know I didn't know. I took a trip with the executive team of the brand consumer market team to Southern Africa, and here is a picture that was taken in Europa. On the left, you see me. You see me huge in this room, but I actually felt so, just like you, Sachin, so small. More than small, minuscule. When I look at the immensity, the grandeur, the scale of the operations. On the other side, I felt very inspired by the connection of the De Beers people and the Debswana people. It's really hand in hand building future success together. And I was thinking about what the future could be. And frankly, I got excited knowing that on the one side, nothing will change, and I would like to talk about that. But on the other side, we just need to be mindful that everything is quite different. And we've used the word resilient. It's good to be resilient and to have the run back in, during the crisis. But it's also important to picture the future with boldness and a sense of ambition. And that's what we're going to try to do today. So, Nothing changes, a diamond is forever. 75th anniversary, you just mentioned it. Probably one of the most exceptional brand signature ever, at least in the century. Four simple words. What doesn't change is what I call the De Beers family. The De Beers people, Debswana people, the site owners, the retailers, will keep on doing and building the diamond dream. And we have a common responsibility in that field. The why we do business doesn't change. We're makers of beauty and creators of joy. We're here to bring joy to the world. And just let's step back for a second. Every single day, every one of us in this room wake up to make someone happy. There are not many businesses where you wake up every morning with that purpose in mind. So nothing changes. Everything is the same. Why? Because you alluded to it, Sachin, as well. Where our diamonds come from is simply a miracle of nature. It started two billion years ago with immense natural forces, a mix of heat and enormous pressure coming up together and creating these miracles of nature. That won't change. What won't change as well, and sometimes we tend to forget it, is that when we see a rough like that, how rare and precious it is. Since the beers was created, there was about 7,000 Kimberley pipes that were sampled. About 1,000 had diamonds in it. 60 were economically viable. Seven have been worked on by the beers and its partners. And up to these days, we have three in Southern Africa, Joanneng, Europa, and Venetia. 
and within these mines, when you look at it, it's very few high-quality diamonds that come every day from those mines. We need to remind and pay tribute to that miracle of nature. Natural diamonds are so rare and precious. And what won't change is the impact we have in people's life. We talked about you know, the importance of the impact we have on our communities and the communities of the countries we operate in partnership with our, with our government partners. But we also spread joy and happiness to the world. And you know what? That can go through any crisis. Why? Because when the times are euphoric, people need to rejoice. And when the times are bad, they need it, us. They need it even more. So it's not a matter of the sequence or the context. Genuinely, the joy is in people, and this is the business we are in. We are in the joy and the eternity business. That diamond dream, by the way, we're going to talk about it, is not only being built in the mines where we operate, when we cut and polish, or in the advertising, but it's very important because I know there are many retailers in the room. It also happens and should happen in store. And the way we bring that diamond dream to the end client is absolutely fundamental. So it's our ability as the DBS family, as an industry, to be able to create, to honor, and to constantly nourish that dream. Nothing changes, but everything is different. And on this one, I think we need to be mindful of the change, the magnitude of the change, the speed and the depth of the change. We have a choice here. Either we stay blind and we say we operate in the business the way we've been doing it for the next past 30 years, or we just embrace it courageously, positively, with optimism and energy together, and then we'll win. Here, there is no need to fasten seat belts. There is nothing scary. It's just the angle at which we look at change. Change is positive. Change is life. Life is change as well. And the idea is not to change everything, is to be able to embrace and understand what needs to be changed. So there is no, nothing scary about that, just opportunities. And by the way, those won't be my point of views. Those will be things that we learn through research, because we constantly have the finger on the pulse of what the end clients think. What we hear from you, the DBS partners, by listening constantly to feedback. So what is this new world we operate in? There are four fundamental changes that will impact the way we do business in the next 10 to 20 years. I can't say exactly what will be the translations of that in our daily operations. Time will come. But we need to be convinced together that these four changes, there is no way back. The first change is we live in a brand world. For years and years and decades, De Beers has been responsible of an entire industry, especially at a moment where it owned 70, 80 percent of the diamond industry, by basically stimulating the end demand of consumers. It was successful for everyone. The thing is that in the past 20 years, and look at the younger generation. For those of you who have children, listen to them, pay careful attention to the way they behave. We live in a branded world. We live in a, way, in a world where we showcase the brands we wear and we buy. So from a commodity-centric industry to a brand-centric industry, and when you look at the highest performers in the industry, they are actually the branded vehicles. The second change is client. Those of you who start to know me, you never hear me talk about the word consumer. So I just want to make you feel comfortable. You can use the word consumer in front of me. I won't be angry. What I want is that we collectively understand what's the difference, the fundamental difference between a consumer and a client. You consume milk or eggs. You don't consume diamonds. A client is basically into experiences and not transaction, and into lifetime relationship and not one-time shopping. There is a real different way of talking and working with them. And this is, frankly, when you can comfortably shop from the comfort of your sofa, what you expect when you come to a store. 
not to be treated like a consumer, but to be treated like a king and a queen, like a client. The third big shift, and frankly, that existed prior to COVID, it was just accelerated, is digital. From digital first to now digital everywhere. We'll talk about that at length. But there is the next phase coming up with Web 3.0. We're going to talk about it. Nobody can tell really what it's going to be. It's just like iTunes. iTunes became big for what you know, the programmers and the app developers made it. The platform existed, and then it was nourished by a collective momentum. The fourth one, and we should have started with that, is the importance of purpose. For the past 50 years, the diamond industry has been driven by value, driven by forces. For the next 50 years, the diamond industry will be driven by values and three Ps. Provenance, people, and planet impact. The times where you were just buying a commodity with great product with attributes, are not over, but are being complemented because now people vote with their wallet. Look at the election's results. Less and less participation rates. But people affirm and assert their belief and their values through their purchase. And when you think about it, when we promise with diamonds, I love you, you're my precious, you're my eternal, you're my everything, the minimum is to apply that promise to ourselves and to act with utmost ethic and a positive impact on people and planet. That's the new world of tomorrow morning. So let's start with the brand, the brand changes. Brands, as we all know, they drive desirability. And they rely on the one side on a quality contract and an emotional contract, almost a functional and an emotional. And great desirable brands tell amazing stories. They don't talk only about their products. They immerse you in their world. Here you have an example of the Tiffany & Company uh, Vision and Virtuosity exhibition that is currently being held in London. And there are very few product talks. There are pieces, beautiful pieces, showcased about 400 beautiful pieces. They tell about the story, what's around. It's stories about brand heritage, about DNA, about codes, and stories that are true and relevant to the brand and presented in a way that, he, that resonates, especially with younger audience, in a contemporary way. Great desirable brands create aspirations, emotions, emotions. And this is the business we're in. They don't talk about occasion-based needs. This is for fast-mover consumer goods. The diamond world needs to go away from occasion-based marketing and needs to enter the world of emotions and basically projecting a vision of beauty and femininity. Here you have on the left, of course, many of you have recognized Dior and on the right, Chanel. They give, it's not a neat state, the way you spray fragrance on you. Because frankly, when we think about it, fragrance is useless. You make it needed and required because it's emotionally relevant. It's the femininity you project and how you propose the end client to feel. Great desirable brands are stars at design. And here again, for years and years, we have commoditized the industry. Design is fundamental. When you think about Apple, who completely reinvented the computer business that relied on a performance contract, the CPU of a computer, they reinvented and shifted it notably through design. There is no brand on this. You know it's an iPhone. It's unbelievable. The signature, the visual signature is so powerful that you can, you can rely, you can attribute it to Apple. And of course, there is technology in Apple. There is innovation. But there is design up to the headquarters of Cupertino that needs to look beautiful. And that paradigm created a $2 trillion business in 20 years. And great desirable brands rock at innovation. Look at Tesla, who tore up completely the rule book by being the first car brand to be 100% electric and 100% with no stores. 
It's unbelievable. They broke entirely the paradigm, and they are soon to be the first one to become autonomous cars. Three breakthroughs, 10 years. Results? The market cap of Tesla today is the equivalent of the first top 10 automotive players combined together. 10 years, Tesla was probably a tenth of the first one. So you see that we enter in a brand world, and that's particularly relevant to be able to find the brand tone so that it resonates. And we have, with the BS, one of the most powerful brands in the world. Let's not forget that. The Bears doesn't sell and doesn't offer to site orders and retailers natural diamonds. They are the Bears natural diamonds. It makes the entire difference. Of course, because we've made them a commodity that can be compared. Four C's from the Bears, from Arosa, from Tinto are all the same. Yes, frankly, from a qualitative standpoint, absolutely. But from an emotional standpoint, it's not only what the diamond is, but what the diamond does. And that's the future of the natural diamonds industry. Natural diamonds with values, with an impact on people, on planet, with a lifestyle, with an emotion, with a desire, with innovation, with design. That's the future. The second shift is from consumers to clients. And on this one, we have a common responsibility, because in most of the cases, this is not directly in the bear's hands. This is in you, my friends, and the bears and large families' hands. And we cannot build, with great efforts, the diamond dream on the one side, in the way we mine, in the way we do advertising, and not honor it in stores. And the truth is that, on the hundreds of thousands of stores that exist in the world, not all of them, not all of them are A-star delivering a diamond dream experience. The way to change that is to not think consumer and basically align diamonds next to the other and saying, which one do you want today? As if we were selling eggs. We are selling rare and precious, amazing products. It's a matter of paying tribute to every single piece we put in front of the eyes of an end client, and being convinced ourselves and having the passion to deliver that story. Client-centric brands put the client first. I'm going to tell you a little story. Yesterday night, I arrived from Europe, and I land late, and I arrive in the hotel at 1.30 in the morning. I'm tired, like everyone, for all of you who uh, came from far. The quality of the check-in that I received yesterday was stunning. The last thing that I wanted is to spend 10 minutes at the desk. I wanted my room key, be able to take a shower and go to sleep. Everything had been prepared, and they were not in a transaction, give me your passport, give me your credit card, give me everything. They say, Mr. Jachet, we're waiting for you. We were thinking you might be willing to go to your room quite fast. It's ready, please follow me. Someone was carrying my luggage. Everything was smooth. People were smiling, didn't ask me zillions of questions about my trip. Like mechanically, they were putting me first. They were not in a transaction. Passport, photocopy. Credit card, you know, it's the deposit. Here is your room key. You want smoking, non smoking. And no, that's transactional. Great client centric brands put the client first, like in the hotel industry. G great client centric brands put the client first in a way they don't sell a product, but they sell you a product or your product that will resonate with your needs and your personality. This is why we've seen such a wave of personalization across the world. Here you have the Vuitton example, but there are so many other brands. And from that perspective, when we think about it in the diamond industry, every single couple is unique, right? If you think about a bride-to-be, the one thing that she wants to be is different from the other one, and she wants to be unique. And how have we brought that personalization promise in our world? Hmm, interesting. A client-centric brand puts the client first and is able to personalize the product and the offer. Client-centric brands 
create services, added services. Here you have an example of MasterCard, and I purposefully take examples from other industries because I think it makes us think. So MasterCard basically offers bespoke services based on client purchase data. And here you have on the right Cartier that, for example, during lockdowns, we're delivering no diamonds. In Shanghai recently during the lockdown, they delivered food. Why? Because that was the scarce thing in town. That was the way for them to put the client first. They were not thinking business. They were thinking relationship. They were thinking long-term relationship. How me as a brand at this moment can I make a positive impact in the life of my client? And finally, client-centric brands create experiences. Again, why if you're in London and live in Heathrow, taking an hour you know, train to go to Albon Street and enter a jewelry store, if it's to get a transaction, the same way you could get it at the comfort of your home? You need to leave something there. Something needs to happen. And it's not only advice. You can get great advice online. It's not only try on. You can now find ring sizers easily. It's got to be about experiences and emotional immersion. So I've taken two examples here. On the left, you have Rolls-Royce, one of the most well-known luxury car brands in the world. Rolls-Royce offers experiences that have nothing to do with the car industry. They propose, for example, uh, photography and painting courses, meeting with great artists. So you see it's an immersion into a world of experiences. And on the right, this is Moët et Chandon, the world's biggest champagne brand in the world. It's an estate, it's a castle that's called the Chateau de Saron. Um, I used to run the business, so this is why I'm, I'm particularly profoundly linked with champagne. Where, by the way, a bottle of Moët et Chandon is about, what, $40? Okay, you can buy it easily, maybe $100 in a restaurant. It's cons consumption, you're not a client. The way Moët et Chandon turns that into a client-centric relationship is that they offer for the best clients, restaurateurs or final clients, to come to that estate, to spend the night there with the friends of your choice, and to do vertical tasting that match the best moments in, in your life, the best dates, your birthday, your engagement day, your, you know, the important ones. And they go even further. At night, the person who takes care of the castle comes to the hosts. So let's imagine Bernard, it's you. Give you the keys of the castle and say, Bernard, the castle is yours. You have the key of the cellar. Go there, choose whatever you want, and enjoy. This is your home. You see that we're far away from the supermarket where a bottle of Moët Chandon is going to retail for $40. This is how great brands create relationship and engagement by creating experiences. And that starts in store. The third big trend is about digital. Ah, uh -huh, great news. Digital is important. Yes, but digital is changing a lot and at super fast pace and in a very different way depending the places in the world. China is not evolving in the same way than Europe than the US and we need to watch and understand that. What's happening? Let's think pre-purchase. 90% of the luxury shoppers and especially in the diamond world browse online before considering purchasing a natural diamond. 90%. And they spend up to 30 minutes getting content. This is where the first decision-making is being forged. The decision is being thought about, I would say. Piaget, we take the Piaget example here, but we could have taken many other examples, allow you to browse the store virtually, make and ask for an appointment. And if you look at Prada on the right, it's their partnership with Snapchat, where you can browse with an augmented reality, and there is an ability, an ability on the app to buy. Okay? But you have so many more examples. I'm sure that everyone has seen it. So it's important not to think only at the moment of purchase, but way before. At the point of sale, things are changing as well because we want to create experiences. And what can create augmented content? Technology and experiences. On the left, you have Farfetch with the store of the future. That's um, the partnership with Browns in London, where they feature interactive mirrors you have that also in the eyewear industry or in the makeup industry um, with digital touch points, with mirror, you know, and things like that where you don't necessarily have to wear the outfit. On the right, 
here you have the auction world. I eventually not take only retail. For many, many years, there were auction places where people were in a room like that with someone with a hammer saying, okay, no, no, and a few people on the phone. You see that kind of, you know, grammar. Now it's changed completely because they reinvented themselves over the course of COVID. They do live broadcasting with immersive content, and up to today, the best performing auction houses deliver more than 50% of their revenue through digital relationships and orders. Guess what? The De Beers Blue that you see here, that sold for $57.5 million by a very fortunate man, he was not in the room. He never saw the piece. All he got was digital content about his purchase. And he spent $57.5 million. Have we thought about the way we, in our stores, in our daily lives, in our, our interactions with our end clients, we deliver on that? Post-purchase, because sometimes, especially when you have made-to-measure or special orders, you pay, and then you wait, you don't have your product. Think of Ferrier Cartier. The most VVIP cars take sometimes a waiting list of two to three years. You pay cash in four, and you wait two to three years. And the set for you program from Cartier, you wait between six to eight weeks for your ring to be built up. This is not something where you're waiting say, what the hell are they doing? They send you content constantly. They tell you, Jacques is building up for you in Place Vendôme. They tell you, Matteo is assembling the car right now in Maranello. They send you pictures, personal, they storytell around your purchase and make it enjoyable. But pre, during, or post-purchase is not over. There is a whole new world ahead of us, which is the metaverse and Web 3.0. And on this one I said, let's not be scared. Just let's be curious and let's listen to the younger generation. And I urge, I'm fortunate to have very tough 21 and 18 year old girls who tell me, Daddy, you're absolutely ignorant. And I say, that's okay. It's okay not to know. But it's not okay not to try to know. We need to demonstrate the curiosity collectively so that we play in this world our role. I've taken two examples. This is Nike who bought Artifact. Maybe some of you have heard about it. These guys do sneakers that don't exist. They do virtual sneakers only. Why? Because the younger generation, if you take the time out of school, they spend more time in the digital world than in the real world. And that turns us crazy, the dads and moms in the room here. But it is what it is. Do we need to play in that role? Yes. Are we ready to let that space empty? No. Here you have Montclair, one of the biggest success in the fashion industry for the past 10, 15 years. They were the first one to showcase pieces in the metaverse where you can dress up your avatar with the same kind of outfit that you can buy in store. And those are obviously the most expensive ones. So you see that digital was first and is now becoming everywhere. It's not a matter of splashing digital. It's the digital content at the right time, in the right place, for the right reason. Last but not least, a personal passion of mine, the purpose. It's from value to values, not a from to, it's we keep the value, but we top it with values. And the values is the kind of impact, not only what a diamond is, but what a diamond does. And that is fundamental. The first one is obviously provenance. No need to say that since February 24th, our industry changed with what happened in Ukraine. And if we thought that nobody cared about where the products were coming from, they do now. And if we think that because consumers don't ask in our stores where the diamond comes from, and we can stay like ostriches by saying, the time will pass, maybe in one or two years we'll be back in the good old times, I'm telling you, no. No, because if you take other industries, they tell you much more, and they are much cheaper products, they tell you much more about where the products come from, how they were made, who discovered them, when, and so on and so forth. This is a huge opportunity for us. It's not provenance for provenance. But if we step back, do we all agree 
that we promise utmost quality natural diamonds. Yes? Okay. So then let me ask you a question. If you care about quality, you know how it's made, right? Yes? So if you know how it's made and where it comes from, you should be able to tell me, right? And today we don't completely. It's not provenance for provenance, it's provenance as a sign of quality. Because when you know where it comes from, it means you care. And that is something that makes it credible that your products are qualitative. So Aston Martin come and made in the UK, embodied by James Bond, and you have Ernest, known for the Kelly bag and the other ones. The finest leather, they trace every single leather, and it's also the craftsmanship journey from the cow, if I may, the, 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 the leather to the shoulder. Provenance is not an option, it's the future for sure. And this is why at the Bears we've invested in technology five years ago with a $50 million investment with Tracer. It's not only a, pr a provenance you will claim, but you will be able to prove and to guarantee. The second P is people. People want to know what's the impact you have on communities. What's the impact of your activities on communities? Here, it needs to resonate with the purpose of your brand and the truth of your brand and look like something not built up, but very genuine and authentic. Think of Burberry. Burberry is well known for its Kashmir scarves, right? What do they do? They protect the community of Kashmir. L'Oreal is known for making women beautiful, right? What do they do is women who suffer from particularly breast cancer they go in hospitals and they make them up so that they feel beautiful and radiant. So the positive impact you have on people, on communities, is fundamental to these days to be heard and relevant. And last but not least, planet. There is only one Earth. There is no B plan. If the world were to consume, like an average Chinese, we would need two planets. Like an average European, three planets like an average American, five planets. It doesn't work. You don't need to graduate from Harvard Business School to understand that Houston, we have a problem. It means that we can't keep on depleting without giving back, without building back. And it's not even neutrality, it's positive impact. And when you feel the sense of urgency again of the younger generation, they don't want to own cars. It's a nonsense for them. Listen to the young generation. It's fascinating from that perspective. So you have brands that have made protecting the planet their purpose, like Patagonia. We're in business to save our home planet. Or you have on the right mega brands like Rolex. And again, true to who they are in their DNA, which is exploration and everything, protects the planet in the poles, for example. So. For those of us who may not be convinced, and frankly, there is no lesson to give. It's just observations and building up your own conviction on that at your own pace. We're here to accompany, not to tell. But for the skeptical, the cynical, the say, nah, consumers don't ask all of that. Wait, it's coming at fast pace, by the way. Look at the numbers. This is basically uh, McKinsey research that shows and talks about the 2021 to 2025, not 2040, 2025 growth rates for the jury industry. For classical jury, low single digit, 3 to 4 percent. For branded diamond jury, 8 to 12 percent CAGR growth. For jury with purpose, 25 to 35 percent. So there is a fourth P after provenance, people, and planet. Which P is it? Profit. I would like to recap um, on, again, this is not an action plan that I present today. First, I'm officially three months in the business. I joined in induction from Feb, from 1st Feb to 30th of March, and officially hold the reign of the business since April 1st. So I'm precisely 90 days in charge. 
and I won't come up with the full plan and you're going to see what you're going to see. But I wanted to share those principles with you so that they are a source of inspiration. And I talk about the De Beers family. It's not De Beers alone that knows it all. We are rich of our collective knowledge, of our collective entrepreneurial spirit and trust. But bear in mind that these four changes are for real and they're happening under our eyes. We are going from a category-led marketing to a branded world, where with brands creating stories, aspirations, design and innovation. We are entering the world of client after years of talking consumers, where we put the client first, we personalize, we offer service and experiences. It's not only transactional, it's relation-based, it's not one-time shopping, it's lifetime shopping. Digital is everywhere, pre-purchase, during purchase, post-purchase, and soon in the metaverse and web 3.0. And the purpose is a matter of provenance, people, planets that will drive profit. So before concluding, I would like to share, just like I started with an initial picture that I took in, in, um, in um, Southern Africa, in Botswana. This was the last picture after probably, I don't know, David, hundreds, thousands of pictures that Chin we took. And it was a night after a long day, and I saw in that fiery night probably the most beautiful and moving sunset of my entire life. I saw a sky full of stars. I saw a future full of diamonds. And I saw a De Beers family, De Beers, government partners, cyclers, retailers, deciding to believe together. And when we believe, we win. A diamond is forever, we said it, it's 75 years old. Today is where forever begins. Thank you. So, it's with immense pleasure and gratitude that I'm now um, welcoming His Excellency Mr. Gilbert Mangori. Please join me on stage. Your Excellency, thank you. Well, 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 um, amazing, isn't it? In 1947, so we've just had, and we know that what turned out to be the largest democracy in the world was born, India. We've just had it. In 1947, what turned out to be the largest brand in the diamond sector came into being. A diamond is forever. And I'm humbled to say and tell you that in 1967, what turned out to be the largest diamond pipe in the world was discovered by the Beers in Botswana, which was then the poorest country in the world. There's something very unique about the seven, isn't there? 1947, 1947, in 1967. I'm very humbled to be here today representing that 
by then, which was by then the poorest country in the world, where the largest diamond pipe was in the world was discovered. Very amazing. As if that was not enough about this something that ends with a digit seven. David, if you heard him properly, if you were listening to him, it's, nine, it's 2022 today, and he was here saying, De Beers invested in technology five years ago. And five years ago was 2017. I'm beginning to fall in love with this thing that ends with a seven. Wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to pay my salutations to Mr. Mark Jashit, Chief Executive Officer, De Beers Brands. Mr. David Praga, Executive Vice President. Mr. Amit Pratihari, General Manager, De Beers, and Forever Mark. Mr. Jane, Managing Director, De Beers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. It is a great honor for me as I stand here today to be part of the De Beers Forum 2022, celebrating the marking of 75 years or 75th anniversary of the signature mark. A diamond is forever. Allow me to take this time, to take this opportunity to thank DBS for inviting the Botswana High Commission to this event. This invitation is a clear testimony to the strong partnership and collaboration between the Republic of Botswana and DBS company that has subsisted over a long period of time. The Botswana DBS partnership has indeed contributed immensely towards Botswana's development goals and objectives, resulting in the transformation of our country from the poorest of the poorest countries in the world at independence in 1966 to a middle-income country at this point in time. It was not by default that Botswana was able to achieve this middle-income status in such a record time, but it was because of the fact that the country has always maintained and upheld a minerals policy that sought to create, among others, an enabling environment for the mineral sector to grow. And that the proceeds from the diamonds were deliberately channeled to ensure sustainable socio-economic development for our country and its people. Prudent policies were carefully crafted and enacted to ensure optimal and accountable mineral development and beneficiation, thus leading to Botswana's revenue growth, investment promotion, economic diversification, as well as maximizing economic benefits for the people of Botswana while enabling the private sector or private investors 
to earn competitive returns. Through this prudent management of our mineral resources, our diamonds in particular, Botswana has maintained or oh, the diamond in particular have become or have been the mainstay of Botswana's economy over the years. We have a population, very small population, and with a population of just 2.5 million people. Diamond revenues have been used responsibly to build infrastructure such as roads, hospitals, schools, and other social amenities. Diamond revenues for Botswana accounted for 76% of the export revenue, 45% of government revenue, and 33% to gross domestic product. At 6,700 US dollars, Botswana's per, per capita income, Botswana is now among the highest in Africa. This highest GDP per capita at this point in time started from merely 84 US dollars per capita at the time of independence. <laughs> Thanks to the wise and logical decision by De Beers to relocate the Diamond Trading Company, DTC, from London to Haborone in Botswana. Botswana has seen increased development and growth of many new businesses in the hotel, restaurant, transport, and entertainment sectors. The creation of our own, or our state-owned, Okavango Diamond Company, responsible for marketing and selling the Botswana government's share of the rough diamonds, also contributed significantly to the exciting developments mentioned above. With unwavering support, from partners like De Beers, there can be no doubt that the lives of our nation will continue to be impacted positively. We appreciate the significant role that De Beers is playing in touching and changing the lives of our people. Without any doubt, Botswana and the beers alone could not be where we are now if it was not for the pivotal and very important role played by those who continue to buy our diamonds. India is considered the rough diamond manufacturing capital of the world. Over 80% of Botswana's rough diamonds are cut and polished in India, while a sizable percentage of finished products are being sold to India-based customers, no, not customers, clients, so says David. The vast majority of companies that have set up cutting and polishing facilities in Botswana are Indian. Of course, a crucial issue for consideration in the minerals resource-based chain value is sustainability or value chain, which should always be at the back of our minds as we strive to exploit our mineral resources. It should be done in a responsible manner that ensures a positive legacy for our future generations. In the case of Botswana, we always ensure that the mining licenses are issued in line with the responsible mining policy. This means 
ensuring that diamond mining is being conducted ethically and that for every diamond sold, communities around the mines are being enriched and income earned from diamonds is reinvested into the community for initiatives that will last beyond the diamond mines. Rest assured, uh, important clients, that for every diamond that you buy from Forevermark, positive impact is being made in the lives of the people of Botswana. As you may be all aware, this year, my country, Botswana, assumed the rotating chairmanship of the Kimberley process and has just ended hosting the 2022 international uh, or intersessional meeting of the Kimberley process in the tourist resort town of Kasani, a few kilometers from the beauty that you've been seeing here uh, in the Okavango Delta. It is indeed a testimony that my country continues to play a prominent role in the diamond industry. Whereas we are gathered here today celebrating our partners, De Beers' 75 years of successful history under the global theme of a diamond is forever. In my own country of Botswana, we are celebrating over 50 years of successful partnership with the Beers under the national theme of a diamond is for development. As a country, we stand tall and proud that through the prudent leadership of our founding fathers, diamond revenues have successfully been utilized to develop our country and uplift the living standards of our people. And this legacy has fortunately cascaded down to the successive political leadership of our country up to now. As a country, we stand tall and proud that our diamonds have been a unifying factor rather than a source of conflict and ethnic animosity as witnessed in other regions. It is for these reasons that Botswana feels and stands ready, capable and qualified to host the inaugural secretariat of the Kimberley process and we are vigorously campaigning for that. Please allow me to take this opportunity to appeal to those of you who may have the power of influence in your own way to lend support to Botswana's bid to host the Secretariat of the Kimberley process. Your support will be highly appreciated. To all potential investors who may be looking to invest into the Botswana diamond sector, I wish to confidently assure you that you would have made the right and wisest decision. Botswana has a well-regulated, transparent, and investor-friendly business environment. Therefore, we encourage Indian companies to take advantage of the business opportunities in the Botswana mineral sector. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my government and the people of Botswana, I wish once more to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to the BS as well as the people of India for their continued support. We look forward to enhanced partnership in the future. Let me take this opportunity to say thank you and thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you, His Excellency. It's almost 134 years ago. That's where it all started. Nobody could have ever believed that one company, De Beers, has been leading the diamond dream for the entire world. Today, the diamond market is estimated to be at 89 billion dollar, and everybody in the value system have benefited from all the initiative that De Beers have taken. From a perspective of De Beers, we believe Indian current share of diamond consumption will grow into double digit. And will be continuing to the growth engine for the whole diamond world. This growth, however, is not going to be equally distributed. Most of us will get stronger and shape the future, and some of us will perish over the time. Hence, I would urge you to think long term about your business. With great execution comes great deliveries. We, in India, we have more than 275. Stores present in 60 cities, working closely with 100 retail partner across the country. We will end 2022 with 2.5 lakh diamond inscribed, close to 60,000 carat, and most importantly, we will have a 30 exclusive store by this year end. At De Beers, we believe in retail excellence, and that's where we are moving forward. We would work extensively to bring consistency in addressing clients' needs, the excellency in leveraging four crucial areas of retail: place, product, people, and the process. This helps create synergy and consistency that elevates end client experience of De Beers brand. Our competition is with branded world. All the elements that impact the client decision-making process. Will be taken at topmost priority with minute detail, be it client relationship, be it storytelling, be it product mix to product pricing, or even how the visual merchandising done at the store, or even the lighting and so on. Everything will be dealt with a finer detail. Our shopping shop have created a large impact at your store so far. We have more than 150 shopping shop across the country. Covering almost 80,000 square feet of retail space. A big thank to all of you, our partners who have entrusted with this precious space, retail space. The key take is that our shopping shop today has an average stock turn of 2.5 to 3 times, which is a clear result that it has a strong impact on the retail floor when the client is walking into your store. Seven years back, we just did a pilot. We launched a De Beers Forever Mark exclusive store in Bangalore, and we have got a very very positive response from the end client. De Beers Forever Mark exclusive stores are positioned at young, brand conscious client who like to get into detail or are discerning and willingness have a willingness to express themselves. It is a simple business collaboration idea, but yet profitable one. We will give ready tool to engage with the end client. and as i said we are committed to build this future friends hope you remember we did an interesting study 3 years back we talked about the fastest growing economy in the world and our plan to tap into that economy that economy is human economy we are de beers with the help of our research partner did a deep dive into this segment and built a diamond jewelry collection Which would appeal to the modern self-purchasing woman and launch for a mark Avanti collection last year. We got an amazing response. We sold more than 8,000 units with a top line of 60 crore. We are launching few exciting lines to Avanti collection, and the for a mark Avanti collection embodies the spirit of possibilities, inspiring the tailblazer to believe in their power and make an everyday lasting statement. For a mark Avanti collections. Is a reminder of remarkable things that flows from the life first leaps. At the heart of the design is beautiful, rare, and responsibly stones. De Beers Forever Mark diamond, encircled by yellow, rose, and white gold, always seemingly in motion. The design rule of the entire collection is based on its iconic setting, and the diamond 
that flows through the volume of the species. This symbolizes the ripple effect to associate with action and impact. May we have the Feuermark Avanti video, please. Introducing the Forevermark Avanti Collection. The future can unfold from a single ripple. A moment can start a movement, carrying you further than you ever imagined. Embrace the power of possibility. One ripple can start a wave. Avanti. Forever mark. A diamond is forever. Thank you. Another interesting category we are focusing, and that is diamond bangles. And diamond bangles has been part of Indian culture for a very, very long time. This is an important category for us also. From our point of view, our circle of trust will ensure the end client that each diamond into this bangle is natural and has a De Beers stamp. Our consumer research have indicated the average purchase cycle of this particular product takes between eight weeks to six months. Hence, our communication idea is to go always on across the media as per the consumption pattern of the designing bangle clients. Like every year, our design and innovation team in Milan works very closely with Trend Forecaster to design key themes and shape the desire for the jewelry collection. This year, we're launching three trend collection, floral fantasy, kaleidoscope, and new opulence. And I would urge uh, all our participants to visit our manufacturer, wherein they have design collection based on the themes and look and plan for their coming festive season. From retail environment to product, and we need a strong campaign. At De Beers, we are working very closely with media agency and creative partner, and have understood very closely post-COVID behavior and the consumption pattern. So we are designing our festive campaign and media plan based on the new consumption pattern. Our campaigns would always ensure the people identified De Beers Diamond with love, positivity, joy, and growth at the time when they, we need it most. In our, all our campaign, Forever Mark Avanti collection would be amplified via 360-degree campaign with a focus on digital and, of course, utilizing the key traditional mass media. Now, the journey from retail store to excellent product, a strong campaign, but all this would not materialize with the key people on the store. It's about the people who represent the brand. It's the people who connect to the end client. And that's our Rockstar Sales Ambassador. We have been doing a rigorous and engaging training session over the time. Under DBS Forever Mark, we have done more than 240 sessions covering around 30,000 participants. And in Code of Origin, we have done 70 sessions and 800 participants. We, we would like to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of this Rockstar Sales Ambassador. May I please call upon the names of the... Arpan Mehta, Fortofino. Oppu Karmakar, Senko Gold and Diamonds. Madhura Goshal from Indian Gems and Jewelry Creations. Mehul Joshi from Kalamandir. Monica Sharma, Fortofino. Netu Bagel from Kalamandir. Mushtaq Sharif from Malabar Gold and Diamonds. Nehal Shetia from Antara, Sharmishta Shil from Malaba Gold and Diamonds, Srirangapuri from Kirtilal's Hyderabad Boutique, Shobarto Adak from Senko Gold and Diamonds, Suresh from Joy Lukas, and Vijay Kumar from Abaran. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nine months back, we introduced a new concept from DBS. And I must tell you, what an amazing response. We were surprised the, how the end client was connecting about this responsibly sourced diamond. We did a pilot, and we have, as I said, we got a very, very positive response. Now we are working on the enhanced version of Code of Origin, which would be based on four Cs and three Ps, people, planet, and provenance. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we have a very packed schedule for all of you for next three days and i hope you get enriching experience as we have planned for it thank you once again for joining us i look forward personally interacting you for next three days in other words of abraham lincoln the best way to predict future is to create it dear friends here's to creating future where we will all thrive and prosper together now may i welcome david prager executive vice president and chief brand officer of dbs he is accountable for brand strategy including brand marketing brand protection and leading the group's commitment to create a positive impact in people's life and the health of the planet through its building forever sustainability framework he leads a strong team across the brand and mark, brand and global marketing corporate affair sustainable impact and natural diamond initiatives he serves on the board of diamonds to good and today he would talk about dbs commitment to sustainability may i welcome david prager thank you uh, thank you amit that is a gigantic picture of a guy who already has a big head so it's a bit disconcerting but thank you and your excellency thank you for being here it's great to have you with us you know as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of a diamond is forever our team has really been reflecting on what it has meant to our grandparents our parents and what it can mean to a new generation about to fall in love start families and accomplish great things the secret success of the idea encapsulated in a diamond is forever is that it is a statement of purpose it is saying i must i can mark those things most important in my life they require a tangible expression of the intangible by the only symbol worthy of the role now the top reasons we all know for purchasing a diamond are to mark an engagement or a marriage give a gift of love or increasingly to buy yourself something to mark an accomplishment or a milestone but the data shows that the personal status that is inextricably linked with giving and receiving a diamond is giving way to a new concept of cultural status that fuels the decisions of millennials and gen z who together make up the largest purchasing group in the world we see the emergence of a redefinition of status now this new status is still an expression of who i am and what i value but what i value and what i want you to know about me now that has changed dramatically from my parents and my grandparents the brands we purchase communicate the sort of person we are and what is important to us this idea of a new status and luxury is at the very heart of what we have always called the diamond dream a dream more relevant than ever if it is reimagined and reinvigorated for the decade ahead and the diamond dream it is emotional a company's carbon footprint its inclusive culture our community engagement those are very rational things but what if we're able to more directly link the investment you have made as an individual to a mission to protect the natural world and to improve people's lives now that is status and that is very emotional last year De Beers commissioned the firm Globescan to conduct global research across seven countries looking at the global consumers and sustainability in natural diamonds. The study polled 8,000 men and women on issues related to client behavior and preferences in relation to sustainability and diamonds. The results showed a strong level of engagement with sustainability topics across many different types of purchases including diamonds. And in the past 5 years, 60% of all clients and more than 80% of opinion formers have chosen to buy a product made in a more environmentally 
or sustainable way over another product. Clients across all geographies have also shown clearly that when they choose an alternative, they're prepared to pay more for jewelry brands that invest in sustainability. They found that 85% of those willing to pay, uh, of those willing to select the sustainable product, are open to paying a premium on average of about 15%. 15%. At De Beers, we believe our values create value. When it comes to environmental management, inclusion, ethics, social cohesion, some see disruptive risk for our industry. We see disruptive opportunity. The disruptive opportunity of sustainability, not of sustainability, but of purpose, of mission, of meaning. We believe this opportunity is one of the most important things to happen to our industry in decades, but the opportunity will be lost if we don't act. And at De Beers, we are all in. We believe in the power of purpose-led brands to capture the imagination of a new group of clients still looking to give an enduring symbol of commitment, but also looking to express something about who they are and what they value based on the choices they make, the items they buy, and what they choose to wear. For no product can this be more true than for a diamond. Whether worn every day, once in a while, a diamond doesn't just mark a moment, a diamond marks the passage of time. And increasingly, for brands that sell them, a diamond will enable those who give and receive them to make their mark on the world around them. That is the role and the power of a purpose-led brand, not to treasure, not to reassure, excuse me, our clients that our route to market has caused no harm, but to inspire them, to include them in something bigger than they can create themselves and to enable them to make their mark on the world around them. There is more and more data demonstrating the expectations that clients have for brands to share their values by standing out, by standing up for the things they care about. We see this every day in our own lives. We don't buy things, we buy brands. Brands we know, brands we trust. Brands that say something about the type of person we are. And yet, as an industry, somehow when we talk about sustainability, we forget what has made diamonds so successful over decades. We forget why people give diamonds and why people wear diamonds. We forget that diamonds and the success of our industry is built on one thing. It has always been about how diamonds make us feel. What they enable us to signal about ourselves to the world around us. I am loved. I am valued. I am successful, I am the future, and increasingly, I am making a positive contribution to the world. If we listen to what the data is telling us, none of it suggests that clients will buy more of your product because you've done less harm than your competitor. What the data does convincingly show is that clients will seek out and pay more for a luxury brand that makes an emotional connection with them while helping to make the world a better place because they want to make the world a better place. A Diamond is Forever has always been about helping clients to externalize and eternalize their values. As their values evolve, they expect us to keep pace and to stay relevant. At De Beers, we're privileged to start at the source. We go to the ends of the earth to discover diamonds, and we know firsthand the impact they have and the story they can tell. Whether our diamonds reach your business, or when our diamonds reach your business, the story they tell is your story to tell. So let's talk a little bit about the story. Making the world a better place. Now that is admittedly quite a big statement, and it's an emotional idea. It requires an active pursuit, intention, and a real sense of mission. But what if a diamond represented forever, not just for the person who received it, but for the person who found it? 
to the graduate who sorted it, to the woman who polished it, to the entrepreneur who set it in a new design. What if a diamond could build forever? What if the diamond on your finger stood not just for the birth of your child, but for more than a decade in which every single baby born to an HIV positive mother was HIV negative? What if the precious diamond around your neck played an active role in safeguarding precious endangered species around the area in which it was found? What if the diamond studs you bought yourself to celebrate that new job had a role in lifting up a woman to pursue her dream of opening a small business near to where your diamonds were discovered? And what if owning a diamond meant you were playing an active role in the fight against climate change because the unique properties of the very kimberlite rock your diamond was liber liberated from is actively pulling carbon from the atmosphere as we speak and safely storing it away for the next millennia, turning a diamond mine into very literally a carbon vault. What if a diamond isn't just forever? What if we can prove to you that your diamond, the one you are wearing right now and may someday, someday pass on to someone you love, is building forever. This is our mission, to build forever for the men and women who come into your store and for the men and women who made that moment possible. And I don't use this word mission lightly, but that's exactly what it is for the men and women of De Beers. Building Forever sits at the core of our business and is broken down to 12 ambitious goals that we have publicly committed to achieving by 2030, meaning that every diamond we discover and every diamond of ours that you sell is making a direct and clear contribution to the goals and the mission, which we know are meaningful to clients that, and it will empower them to play a verifiable role in making the world around them a better place. You know, sometimes being a truly purpose-led brand requires you to step kind of outside of your comfort zone and beyond your individual capability to deliver change that is lasting. As a brand totally dedicated to the advancement of women and girls, De Beers has an ongoing partnership with UN Women to change the face of female leadership in our business, female entrepreneurship in the communities in which we work, and female representation in our advertising. It will see us achieve gender parity across our business by 2030, support 10,000 women entrepreneurs to run small businesses, and engage 10,000 girls in science, technology, engineering, and math. It has also undeniably connected us to a new group of clients looking to take an active role in creating a more gender equal world. The diamonds that fund this work, these are the very same diamonds that you sell in your store. And as a brand that recovers nature's treasure, we have a real passion, as you've seen, for treasuring nature. Treasuring nature means playing an active role in providing safe haven to endangered species across Africa. It turns out that, maybe not surprisingly, diamond mines are pretty secure places, and the areas that surround uh, uh, them are part of our effort to secure half a million acres uh, for conservation in southern Africa to protect the natural world, which translates to the protection of six acres for every one used for mining. Rhinoceros, lions, giraffes, springboks, cheetahs, wildebeest, warthogs, and too many species of wild birds to count. Oh, and I missed one. Elephant. These guys, in fact, we have been so successful at protecting elephant around our Venetia mine in South Africa, the population has begun to swell to unsustainable levels. Elephants are preying on other animals, monopolizing food and damaging infrastructure. So De Beers had to figure out what, we, what to do, and we partnered with a group called the Peace Parks Foundation to transfer 
200 elephants, 100 so far, 1,000 miles away to the Zanav Nature Reserve in Mozambique, which has been ravaged by civil war and had its own elephant population entirely eradicated. It is the longest elephant translocation ever recorded, and I can report to you new baby elephants have been spotted, have been born, they're about this high, and it set the conditions for populations of elephants to flourish far into the future for generations to come. And there is a direct link between our ability to do this work and the diamonds that fund this work. These are the diamonds that you sell in your store. One of our boldest Building Forever goals is to be carbon neutral by 2030, and we're implementing our roadmap for getting there, which, is, uh, which consists of reducing and replacing fossil fuels across our business. But it also means going further than that. For the remaining hard-to-abate emissions, we're seeking out long-term, innovative, nature-based solutions to capture carbon. Not far from our marine operations that you saw earlier in Namibia, we're investing in Kelp Blue, a pioneering startup cultivating vast underwater kelp forests. Research shows kelp can sequester carbon dioxide at rates that far exceed terrestrial woodlands. In fact, listen to this. The science suggests this kelp forest could sequester four times more carbon than the equivalent area of the Amazon rainforest, making the diamonds you sell in your store part of the mission to directly address climate change. And in our most ambitious project yet, De Beers has joined forces with National Geographic to protect the source waters of the Akavanga Delta and the lives and livelihoods they support. The Akavango Basin, which spans southern Angola, eastern Namibia, and northern Botswana, is the main source of food and water security for a million people. It feeds the Akavanga Delta, located in northern Botswana, which is one of Africa's most important ecosystems, unrivaled in its biodiversity. The Akavango Delta's health is dependent on these source lakes and rivers which carry the water from Angola as it originates in rain in the highlands. While the delta itself holds protected status, the Akavango Basin that feeds it does not, and the effects of commercial agriculture, climate change, are putting this critical lifeline at risk. Over the next five years, De Beers will work with National Geographic to provide on-the-ground support and funding to accelerate work already underway to protect Af Africa's endangered species, ensure water and food security for one million people, and develop livelihood opportunities for 10,000. As part of Akavango Eternal, we're also working with the storytellers at National Geographic to share this epic story of the Delta with the world. That includes creating inspiring content sharing it across National Geographic's media channels, including their more than half a billion social media followers, and by providing this content to Beer's partners to show in their stores, because the diamonds, getting, you're getting the catch of it, because the diamonds that fund this work are the diamonds you sell in your store. Protecting the natural world and improving people's lives, this is how De Beers is building forever. And the data is clear. Clients want, clients expect to be proud of the purchases they make. They want the brands they own to take a stand, to be bold and deliver for people and the planet in ways that only they can. A diamond is the most emotional purchase most people will ever make. A purchase that is entirely about values and pride. And no brand has more potential to connect to that pride than De Beers. But it's not only an opportunity for us. It is an opportunity for all of us. And it is an opportunity for each of us. Every De Beers person you meet over the next few days is committed to building forever. It is personal.
ask them about it. And it's personal to me. I'm not just proud of our impact, I'm inspired by it. And I really truly hope that you are as well. Because our Building for our Forever story is your story to tell. The mission is your mission. And it's yours to share with the people who come into your store. You can count on us to continue to invest in this story and to create the inspiring content that you know De Beers is known for. And we look forward to working with you to help clients express who they are and to protect what is important to them and to give new meaning to Miss Garrity's famous line that when it's De Beers, a diamond is forever. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to David because what he's done is, you know, the fact of sustainability is not just a trend that we say just to a tick. It's serious, it's important. We heard from His Excellency about what diamonds have done to a nation, what diamonds have meant to people over there. From a poorest country, how many years back did you hear that? Just a few years back to one of the fastest growing economies for all we do today. So thank you, David, for opening up that this is a mission together. We are all in this together to shape this new world and be ready for where the end clients are changing. Moving forward, I wanted to just quickly acknowledge our key partners who are here, our Diamantes and manufacturers. They've been standing with us in thick and thin, times that are up, times that are down. The great work they do for bringing these miracles of Mother Nature that we give them to spectacular sparkly diamonds and creating jewelry that's happened. And I would urge all our retailing partners to please visit each and every store the amount of work that's happened over the last six months is to give you ready solutions that you can then interface with your end clients with the right product. So thank you all, our dear Monteas and our, our manufacturing partners. We at the, at the forum have always believed the power of knowledge, and I'm going to come to that, but what you see at the back is the De Beers Forever Mark Zone. And I urge all of you to please go back, indulge in the great phenomenal technology. 
Mark talked about, you know, the, we build this great diamond dream, but are we translating that via tech, via digital to the end clients? And you'll find some miraculous, some really cool stuff that can get to your retail. And I'll highlight a few of them. We have put something called, we call the magic door. When you open that magic door, you see live right now what's happening in the mining operations. You see live right now what's happening at GSS. You see right now how the Bengala gem, the ship that I showed you, what's happening there. And our colleagues are waiting to talk to all of you. So we'll throw it in terms of what times they're live. But please look at the magic door because that's what is the back end. That's what is the source. That's where it's all beginning. It's going to be live there. We also have what we call a time machine. It's going to take you back in time for the last 75 years of what this line, a diamond forever, has done. So loads of cool ideas. Please spend time with us behind there. Now, knowledge is a very important aspect. Over the last so many years at our forum, uh, people who've been coming have realized that on day two, we do this knowledge series very intently. We create people who are achievers, inspirers, people who've really made epic organizations, and ideas to look outside the box. Like Mark was showing his examples, which were not necessarily from you know, our closed world. It was from outside of our business. And hence, we have the speakers who are coming in tomorrow. I'm sure we'll get inspired. Pick up those one or two key elements that you can go back and implement in your business. We have three speakers tomorrow. We have Esther, who's heading our research and strategy, and she's going to give you key insights of what's happening in the end client's world, exactly what's happening in the, in the Indian context, and what we can do, what is the opportunity, and we'll share that up. We have Mr. Harsh Mariwala and you know, his products of, of this magnificent organization that he's created. It's a multi-billion dollar company he's created. And his simple products like a parachute oil perhaps exist in all our homes. And he's, it's, it's very interesting. He's going to talk about disruption, about operating in the current world and putting again in his sector the end client on the fulcrum. And lastly, we have Namrata. She heads the whole metaverse and the whole digital side of Sony. Now, again, Mark, Mark touched upon, it's a world that you know, we don't know, but let's be open, let's learn, let's listen to our, our kids and our children, because that's the world they live in. So ladies and gentlemen, I know we'll have a great party tonight, but this begins at 9.30, so please be here on time. That sessions will be very empowering, and I urge that take that one thing, take those two things, and implement them in your business. And just concluding today's session, I'd like to highlight all the team all the De Beers team that's on the floor today. It's the biggest contingent of the De Beers team that's here. We are here because we believe the potential of what this market can do. You know, combined, if you look at all of us combined, we come with over 400 years of experience. We've worked with 87 companies. Yeah? We talk 20 languages, and that's a mix of what we bring on the table. So please engage with us. We want to work with you to really you know, celebrate this, this 75 years of Diamond is Forever, not just looking back, looking ahead. Keep the end client in mind. We will make those changes boldly, not because we think that it's the right thing to do as De Beers, but that's the trend. That's where the end client is going. So from all of us at De Beers, first and foremost, a big heartfelt thank you that you traveled all the way to be here with us. It truly matters to us, but we truly wish that this opportunity for the $75 billion is us, and the leadership sitting in this room will harness it. So thank you all from the bottom of our heart. And while I just end, and I'll, I'll, I'll go, you know, we talked about the source, we talked about Botswana. I think there's loads of things we enable. David touched upon the, the whole moving giants. And I'm going to leave you with the last video. And while you're cutting that diamond on the wheel, while you're displaying some product on the floor, think of what you enable. Because for the next three minutes, just submerge. These are the sounds that when we were all in Okavango Delta, we heard. And these are just a celebration of those sounds. So please submerge in what you all enable every day and what we all enable every day. Please have the video.
Thank you, Sachin. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope those sounds made you as excited to see what you enable, what we all enable, through the miracles of Mother Nature and how diamonds do good. Once again, let's give a big round of applause to all our eminent speakers today. Now, apart from all the wonderful elements present in the room that Sachin highlighted earlier, I would like to highlight a few interesting installations at the pre-function area, which focus on our sustainability initiatives. You are all aware of our association with the Okavango Delta. Highlighting our partnership, we have created an interactive space that brings these sounds of Okavango to you using the light and beauty of our diamonds. Please do explore it. At our forum, we have created an opportunity for you to plant a tree in the Sundarbans in your name. All you need to do is scan the innovative plant QR code at the pre-function area and help spread the greenery. You will also witness a unique giraffe installation created using discarded cardboard rolls and highlighted with turmeric paint. But what's more is that this installation is powered by solar energy, reducing carbon dioxide emissions equivalent to the amount absorbed by 100 teakwood trees. Please take the time to explore these fascinating elements. Every year, we endeavor to make the forum more meaningful, and I am certain that you will return with tangible ideas, which will expand your knowledge, reflect back into your business. Let's celebrate the legacy of a diamond is forever, working towards building the future of natural diamonds. It is the time to grasp change, embrace opportunities, and go beyond the boundaries. The floor is now open for business. Stay safe and have a great day. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you.